You're live. The East Haddam Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for January 5th, 2021 will come to order. Murray, would you take attendance, please? Certainly. Uh, Greg Daigle. Diane Quinn. Here. Richard Fiala. Here. William Smith. Here. Lori Alt, present. James Fenema. And vacancy. Dan, would you read the uh, agenda? Here, give her the public hearing notice. Oh, here, give her that. That's all she needs. I do one at a time. <laughs> Just so that we, you know, as each one starts. Good God. <laughs> we do have it on our agenda, though. No, I can see. Thanks. Town of East Adams, Zoning Board of Appeals. No notice of public hearing. East Town Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing and meeting on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Office Building, meeting room two, to hear the following. At least the last name's look pretty easy. <laughs> Appeal number 1129, 4 Cold Springs Road, Anthony Nero requesting a variance to section 10.1 of the East End Zoning Regulations to construct a shed 31 feet from the side yard property line or 40 feet are required. That's oh. 10, lot 34. Excuse me. Oh. Field number 1130. Nine Berry Road, Robert and Tony Dwayne requesting a variance of, to section 10.1 of the East Adams Zoning Regulations to construct a carport 5.5 feet from the side yard, side line, oh, no, wait, wait. side, side property, property line, line. yeah, well, maybe I do need glasses, 17 feet are required in which, but the proposed addition will bring the lot coverage to 10.3% or 10% of the lot. Assessor's <coughs> map 67, lots, lot. Hill number 1131, 49, Mount Vanessa's Road, Robert Maroon, whatever, requesting a variance to section 10.1 of the Academy Regulations to construct a shed five feet from the side, well, side property line where 25 feet are required, not 39, lot 11. Hill 1132, 123, Mill Road, William. Chilton requesting a variance to section 10.1.5 of the East Adams Zoning Regulations to reconstruct a building for an accessory apartment with a two foot extension added to the original footprint. The structure will be 20 feet from the Roaring Brook water course where 50 feet are required. Assessor's map 21, lot 2. Hearing interested in persons. Shall be heard and correspondence received. <coughs> Physical attendance at this meeting will be a limit to 12 people, including commission members, applicants, staff, and members to the public. Commission members, applicants, and staff. Total eight, which allows four members of the public to attend in person. To attend this meeting and be home. Yeah. Now, you don't have to, that part. The only thing the public needs to know. If they have any comments or questions, they can. Oh, I can email skip down me. here. Yep, right there. Questions or comments before the meeting or during the meeting can be sent via the following email J Ventries, well, that's so J V E N T R E S at EastHaddam.org. Dated at East Haddam, Connecticut, this 15th day of December 2020. J Grady Daigle. Thank you, are we online, pal? We're online. We're yeah. Online. Yeah. Someone has a comment from the public, they can pop up on my screen. Okay. Appeal number 1129. Is Anthony here? No. So, again. I just, yes. <laughs> he, he didn't get the green card sending out properly. And I said, Mr. Nero, you have no choice but to request an extension, which I have in the file. He's requested extension to the next regular scheduled meeting, but here's my thought on this. 
Let's grant him the full 65 days just in case it snows at the next regular scheduled <laughs> meeting and, you know, I don't have a timeline. You're allowed to grant an extension up to 65 days, which that would be the full amount available to him. So just in case, my recommendation of staff is to do that. To make a motion that we grant... Uh... Please ask what happens after 65 days. His yes. time period lapse and he has to reapply. Okay. Make a motion for right. an extension for 65 days. Yes. That's what I just made. <laughs> to, uh, I'll second that. Aye. 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 Okay. Robert and Tony Kumei. packet hopefully labeled number two survey showing the existing condition. Plus a floor plan. And a sketch of the building drawing. Also on the table is I printed out, it's labeled Nine Berry Road, which is just an overhead shot from the GIS giving you Those a, are nice. Yeah, I like giving that. Giving you an idea of relationships to the neighbors' houses and other structures, which there really isn't. <laughs> are the red squares just buildings that are already there? Buildings are there, because if I don't put that little red square, yeah. we wouldn't you know don't get to like. really see it. Blue, the blue outline, the L-shaped outline, is just their property? It's their property. Yeah. Good job, Jim. Thanks. Yeah, this is really makes it easier. And if you look at the existing condition map, which is SP2. Okay. To the, almost in the middle of it, it says septic system. <coughs> Very fine letters, light. There's a septic system. So when asked why, why it really can't go there, that's the location of the septic system. And if you go closer to the road, there's wetlands. Where's the septic system? It's labeled, right? If, are you on the existing condition one? SP2. SP2. If you look right next to where it says tax map, mm -hmm. 57 lot 110. Yeah. Just a little bit above it, it says approximate oh. sewage area. Yep, I that dotted line. Gotcha. That dotted line, you know, well, that, that dotted line is the topography, but the septic system's somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the, orientated, I'd say to the west of it, which is on the other side of the say, place where it says tax map, mm -hmm. that's wetlands. So this whole section is, off is kind of out of, <laughs> out of bounds. Oops. Down the other side, the well is down the other side. Uh, yeah, correct. On the, yeah. The one is in the lower left-hand corner. Of the box. No, yeah, right. lower right-hand corner. Right. Correct. So, you, Chef, you're saying that everything east of that septic system is wetlands? Yep. Or, or the upland review area. So,
last two pages of, of the handout is the architectural layout. demonstrated with a row of uh, trees, okay. the little stars on the plan. This here is going to be 5'7", in the property line? Well, we, we, we put it at 5 and a half just because it's on a little bit of an angle, so. There's a drawing of it. It's an open carport. Now I have no question. I think it's going to the park. <laughs> Driveway being moved? No. The carport's going to be on the other side, right? We'll have two driveways. One we'll from Fowler Road and one on Gary. The one from Fowler Road will serve the carport. Yes. Is this road here? Yes. Yeah, so far. Or here? No, that's fine. It's this one. This one would serve the carport. That's fine, okay. yeah. We got no nothing from the neighbors. Yeah, I was going to say, is there no any comments were comments? brought in? He was legally notified. No comments have come to me. There's no comments on the emailed in. Who is the adjacent neighbor to the So do you know it's where Tommy, by the, Tommy the, used to have the country store? Yeah. That road on, you know, on, on East Town Colchester Turnpike? Then Pine Road, which these two roadways are off of, is that road that cuts back from this. So this, this is Moody's Estates, right? Uh, not Estates, uh, Moody's Association. Moody's Association. Moody's so, Reservoir, so Moody's Lakeshore. Lakeshore, that's it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, these towns towns are the road, so right. they're private, they have an association, and they actually one of the few that have bylaws and collect dues and have a maintenance agreement. Wow. Yeah, the town plows them, though, for health, safety, and welfare, but the rest of it, the paving, the catch basin cleaning, and, you know, all that is done through their assessment process. Filling of potholes? Hmm? Filling of potholes? Potholes, all the, yeah, they, they, they spend about twenty-five grand a year on it. 
Does that road go back to the um, state vault launch? That's, back that's there? a different one. That's over the one over. That's okay. Purgatory City. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it turns out looking as good as these pictures here, I don't think you'll have a problem. <laughs> well, you know, we want to keep it with the way the house is in our neighborhood, too. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this is a really nice spot. Looks nice. Mm -hmm. And the hardship is. Well, this you have was a an old. <laughs> pre existing, non conforming <laughs> uh, lot. It's 0. 0.58 5, 8 acres, I think. The house is situated close to the property line already. The septic and wetlands, uh, you know, don't allow you to use at least one third. And the other thing that wasn't brought up is that that back corner where you could probably move around is really the area for reserve septic. So there's an attempt here to reserve for a future septic. So smallness of a lot. You wouldn't want the reserve next to the house. No, it can't because it has to have separation so from the footing. Put the carport. Yes. Yeah. Was the house built before uh, zoning regs? The the structure was yeah. the original structure was before zoning. Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Those were crazy times. Are there any further questions? No. I'm gonna make a motion to close. Make a motion to close the public. Part Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Discussion? Motion to approve um, appeal number 1130 as there is no neighbor objection and it seems to be the best place to put the property in the hardship is something they, <laughs> they couldn't uh, do anything else with really. I'll second that. Any favor say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Before you go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, get all the. Good. I'll, I'll, I won't have to say it the third time because they know it. The, uh, <laughs> the Nancy will take the minutes, write up an approval letter, send you the approval letter. Doesn't become official uh, until you file that letter on the land record. So this ZBA approval goes with that property forever and ever if you file it. And the other thing is, is that based upon the publication in the paper, there's a 15-day potential appeal period where somebody could appeal the decision of the commission, so, which is normal standing operating. So we get the letter, then I file it with the town clerk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Is there um, an extra set of three drawings that I could have? Just like, um, you want this? Can I give her this one? Yeah, you can give her that. Yep. Yeah. That's her survey. You're talking about that set of drawings? Yeah, that's what you guys looked at. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, it looks nice. Thank you. You don't have this size paper. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Good, Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. house and the subdivision map and with that you should also know because I think if I'm correct you actually own the lot in the back so this subdivision which came to us back in the late 90s 
proposed to cut the lot up with a 20 foot access lot to the back so the driveway is where it is and the proposal is five feet away from his own property line <laughs> but 30 feet away from the neighbor's property line. Mm. That more or less represent it. <laughs> and then the photo shows how it's labeled 249 Mount Parnassus Road. Shows that there's nothing but woods next to them. This is all the way around them. Nothing but woods. Woods and wetlands. Yeah, yeah, a lot of wetlands on the, yeah, from this map. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which is really good because nobody will build there. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got one lot there that is buildable, so that's all. And you own that lot. <laughs> yeah. Good move. Eventually, go to my daughter. So. Well, but with global warming, you could have alligators, yeah, so knows. you never know. <laughs> Side property line is your own land. Right. Is that the stone wall in the picture? No, the stone wall is the 20 feet past the five feet. The stone wall is my property line, but it's it's the property line for the lot number two, which is the lot with the driveway. Okay. Okay. That's the property line. No, um, were there any neighbors that... There's any? been no calls okay. on this subject at all. Okay. I have no questions. I'm trying to figure out where this is. What, um, the road to the to the right, that's Ballahack, right? Yes. And then across the street is Peter's Path, or...? Correct. Across from Ballahack, yep. Okay, so, so his house is the one that's in the back. Now, what's these two over here? You say you own this here too? Or this one? Which? So, so in this blue one, you've yeah. got the blue outline, right. and then right where the 249 is, yeah. he owns that lot also. Okay, but he doesn't own. He doesn't own. In front of him. He doesn't no, own in front right. of him, no. So, what's this, what's this thing about the stone wall and five feet? It's for property that he owns. Here, let me give you this so you can see. So, so there's the stone wall. Oh yeah, and there's, and there's his, his house. His house, his proposed shed, and his extra lot in the back. But he doesn't own this. Correct. So he's he's imposing on this side. So well, he's actually not imposing on that because he meets the zoning for that because he's he, the property line is right there. Uh -huh. So he's imposing on his own property line. Oh, I but he's but he's. 35 feet you know, or, or 30 feet away from the stone wall, which is okay. The stone wall is not the property line? The stone wall is the property line for the neighbor in front. The property line for him for is this, this lot is this line is right this, here. Yeah, 25 feet off the stone wall. So what's oh. in between the stone wall and this? Was that a right of way? Or? That's the right of way it's for the, that lot. It's down. actually fee simple. It's, oh, look at that. It's fee simple all the way back. Jim, just, just so I can be sure. This is, this is it's more than a right stone wall is right here. Part of the lot in the back. Yeah. See this lot? That's this lot where the building is. That's yeah. the yeah. access to get to that over, lot in the back. And, over. and the driveway's right here. And the driveway's right here. So the driveway would go here. It kind of it follows the it 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 property line, the driveway. Yeah, it follows that stone wall. Okay. Basically. So. Well, true, but it doesn't necessarily mean, you know. <laughs> you could actually just. Right away in the woods. Yeah, right away in the woods that you could take advantage of. Should have probably, you should get that little cut off in front of you, too. I'm trying. <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah. I'll bet.
How much room is between the garage and the proposed shed? Eight feet. Want to move a little closer, huh? You're tied to your property line, too. <laughs> yeah, part of the problem, too, is that when you have two combustible types of buildings, they, they, they do like to have some separation. I've seen under people the building put them right next to each other, too. I know that. They yeah. didn't get any permit, either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice excuse, but no. Good to drive things in between. First, the eyeball, two things. The eyeball configuration of the lots, which when they come to us nowadays, we don't allow that. That wouldn't, that, mm -hmm. that, that angle and all that driveway, that driveway is, you know, kind of imposes on that house. We'd have thought about a different way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is, is that the, you know, the wetlands occupy a large part. The reality is, is at the end of the driveway, it's natural progression to put a structure. You know, if, and he's not, you're not the original owner, right? If the house was actually a garage was placed further in and allowed some room for space to do it, but you don't want to create another driveway on the, what would be what, the north side of the house? Uh, you'd be going over my reach field. Over, okay. Yep. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion. Oh, no, go know. ahead, go ahead. I make a motion to approve eleven thirty one. Forty nine Mount Pernassus Road. Put it at, and um, no concerns from the neighbors. 
I'll second that motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Did you hear Jim Steele before about the letter and everything? 15 days and the letter and the money for the last 15 days after. Too early because they oh, they're the one. Well, we originally thought we were going to have two meetings, but the other group decided to go virtual. So now I had a full room, but I was complying to the number of people. And I had right. Oh. Doing things the right way. <laughs> so all we can have is 12 in here, right? If there's things cut, yeah. Yeah, the whole. Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Are you, are you, what are you saying? I'm not one and a half person? No, no, we're just going to cut somebody in half. I mean, <laughs> the whole room, technically, the way this room is set up, we're supposed to have 25 when I have a planning and zoning meeting. So. So we could have 25. Today we could have, yeah. 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 But I tried to, you know, set it up in such a fashion that it would say, they're out in the parking lot, they come through. Work. You know, I used to be a caretaker here in, in the early 50s when Colonel Larry Wilkerson owned us. Oh, the, the building up front? The whole place. The whole place. Yeah. He owned all the way up north to, towards Dean's. So that wasn't... Oh, oh, you're talking about the next application. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other one because I thought that piece on Mount Parnassus, wasn't that Sprecher Farm at one yep. point? Yep. Sides? You got it. Yeah. You got it. What's this one we're doing? We're looking at now. This is on Mill Road. This is a. What river is that? What stream is that? Who's That's Mill Road? Roaring Brook. Who's Clark Mill Road? Clark Hill goes up from the Cadillac uh, Headline Church. Yep. The next intersection, about two okay. miles up, is Mill Road. Comes down the hill. Okay, where the old gas. Wonder if they got locked out. Yeah. <laughs> That's all Spring Road. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wouldn't call it. Thank you. No, God, I was. I'm double checking. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, you know. Um, is that the one that comes down on a weird angle? Where Sheepskin Hollow is on the west side instead of, or the south side instead of the north side. You know. No. <laughs> this, is, this is at the stop side of Mill Road. All the beautiful stone walls and everything in the front of it. Some guy that's an engineer or something in Dun Bonai owns the place. You know. There's a headline. There's a, there's a meeting house there, right? No. That's that's right by the headline church. That's by the headline church. Not by. That's still six feet, Scott. I'm going to move that chair a little closer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's today? 
Sheepskin Hollow Road at, the, at its southern end. Uh, it's a very unusual situation. I know when I was here last, I think it was November, and we spoke about a property, and I said it was about as classic a hardship as you could see. Uh, this is the most unusual hardship that I've ever seen, and it, it may, in fact, be uh, unique to the town. I'm going to let uh, Roger go through the plan first. When he is finished, uh, I will uh, address the hardship issues. Uh, Mr. Chilton is also here if there are any particular questions uh, that you may want to ask the owner. So at that point, I'll let Roger talk. Can everybody see this from that mm -hmm. They also have a, the two sets. And this is a 42-acre parcel located at 143 Mill Road. And uh, as Scott said, it has frontage on three different roads north straight up on this uh, sheet one is equals 100. So this is an overview of the property, 42 acres, bordered on the east, on the Sheets Canal Road, on the south by Clark Hill, and has some uh, frontage on the west on Mill Road. Currently has a senior family residence and a number of detached buildings, including a garage. Sheds, some barns, and primarily of interest to this application is an old mill building that is right here in the southeast corner of the property. In terms of physical features, the Morning Brook number two runs along parallel to Sheepskin Hollow Road on this property. And we have a pond, old mill pond actually. We have, as you see in yellow, this is, Roar, this is the outlet to Roaring Brook that continues parallel to Sheepskin Hollow. This is the old mill building here. This other yellow line here is a, um, a sluiceway or a raceway that can, when it's activated, transport water from the mill pond through the raceway and actually under the old mill building that used to turn a turbine that discharges back into the roaring brook silo. really has not been active in many, many years. I don't know the date of the mill. Typically, those were in the 1800s. Um, building itself is in pretty bad condition. Not economical to restore. I think you have some pictures if you don't like the past. We, we have, um, if this would become perfect, we have a number of trucks. I can pass the computer around. And... Um, I think if you, if you were past this one earlier, I think this shows pretty graphically what kind of condition it's in. There are some better views of this. That's um, the mill there. Yes, it is. So this is the mill building, and the, the sluiceway or raceway actually goes under the building. So 
You know this property. There's a camera. We're also going to pass out two pictures. Uh, if you look closely, there's a little bit of a pattern here. This, this change in, in, the, in the building, we, we want to bump the L part on the east side out two feet. So essentially this variance, well, because the existing building is 22 feet off, we want to get within 20 feet. So it's a, it's a two foot um, change in the separation. But, you know, it's really not fair if you looked at it and said, well, you be, you know, you're supposed to be 50 feet, you want to build within 20 feet. Well, I look at it like we're already within 22, we just want to get two feet closer. Um, Why do you want to bump it out another two feet? Okay, I'm going to talk, if I could defer that answer to uh, the applicant owner. Okay. Bill Shake, Chilton is an architect, he owns and operates an architectural firm in New Haven. He can address what the significance in terms of usefulness of space for that. Okay, just a quick question on this picture here. Is this the part that's, the L part is on this end? Yes. That's so built that up. way, right? This is the, this is the north end. Okay. So this would bump out two feet. From this one? Yeah. Basically. So it'd be even with this? Uh, Still not quite, but close. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, among other things, besides the bump out, right now, you can see the east end of that building is elevated above grade with a series of piers and a retaining wall. So, the retaining wall is in good shape. We're going to maintain that. But of the 10 existing piers, they're in pretty bad shape. We want to replace those, but we don't think we need 10. Cut that back to five. So we're pumping out the building two feet, but in some respects, we are, there's a slight reduction in the activity on the ground level because we're removing piers. Um, so pictures kind of suggest 
Um, and it's true when you go out there. The building is really not practical to try to, to say. But there are some old timbers inside, not enough to be able to recreate the building. And our plan is to salvage those and reuse those either on the reconstruction or on some other project, um, building project being proposed. So we will try to save whatever salvageable. And, and you know, when you say you're going to raise a building, R A Z E, uh, to me that's totally demolished. But you know, we will be removing the building with care to salvage um, the, any of the beams that are still in this one. So um, that's basically the lay of the land on what's existing there, and what our proposal is. So uh, I, don't, you know, I know Bill will talk about why the need for the two foot bump on Scott will talk about. The uniqueness of hardship and all of that. Um, I'd like to start on the west side of the building, if you would, the side that is away from the extreme. The, the reason that the bump out can't take place on that side is because the sluice comes down parallel toward the house, makes a essentially a 90 degree turn, and goes underneath the house at that point. So to bump the house out even two feet to the western side of the house would essentially either alter or eliminate the sluiceway, the historic feature that my client wants to preserve and, and should be preserved. The second thing is the two feet that we're talking about on the east side of the house is not two feet on the ground. It's two feet on the first floor is measured from the west side, which means it'll be a two foot extension from eight or nine feet, I think I have that right, above the ground. The footprint on the ground is going to remain the same. And the reason for the extra two feet, Mr. Chilton, Chilton can address this in more detail if you'd like, but the reason is that the dimensional requirements on the interior of the house for the building code and fire code for doorway widths, hallway widths, for the structure that has the configuration that this does, it's so tight that the only way to make the renovation is with an additional two feet. And because we are unable to effectively go out to the west where the sluiceway is, which is the reason we're trying to preserve this and get their variance in the first place, we must go out on the eastern side. And as uh, Roger, excuse me, Roger explained earlier, because the grade change on the property, even though you'd enter essentially on grade on the west side with a living space, you can't live downstairs because that's where the sluice way is, when you're on grade on the first floor, therefore the extension must go out to the east. We don't need the extension north or south on the length of the building because it's long enough, it's the width that presents the issue. And the two feet is the minimal amount to make effective use of the existing structure, the existing footprint, to honor and adhere to the applicable building codes and fire codes that are involved. There's really no other, no other way to do it. If you want more detail on the, uh, the conventional requirements as they exist on the inside of the house, Children would be happy to answer that. I am unaware, in all the years I've been practicing, maybe you've seen something like this before, but I have not, where a house has been impacted, the structure is going to be impacted by the passing of a sluiceway right through it. This sluiceway would be, it, it would be like having a brook, when it is active and open, running through the basement of your house. I've been out there, this isn't a, um, Covert, if you would have covered covert, this was an exposed area running up to the front door essentially, dropping and running underneath the house, coming out the back or east side of the house. There's no other way to do the project, there's no other effective, effective way to preserve the sluice way, preserve the structure that was there, or the ability to build on the foundation that's there. Try to minimize the impact by designing with a reduction in the number of piers. I think it's nine, nine piers. 
nine, to five, nine piers to five piers to uh, further reduce impact. But the two feet in the area that Roger described is, is critical to be able to make use of the remaining footprint of that building. That's the dark area there. That, that yes, it's run just across. Kind of colored it in? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's um, 2 by 20, 2 by 24. No second floor uh, or third floor, depending on how you count the stories. It's going to remain the, a building of the same number of stories. Uh, but if you did buy the property, I don't know if any of you have. It's, uh, Mr. Chilton maintains an excellent property. Uh, this restoration um, will be uh, compatible with the rest of the work that's been done at the site. The exclusive will be preserved. The historic setting there will be preserved. And the practical way to get that done is to allow the variance, again, it'll be unnoticeable. You, you, you wouldn't even perceive it, given the, the situation on the property. It will have no effect on anyone in the neighborhood. I don't know if there have been any comments at all, but I, I, I don't see how you, would, you could even notice this. The applicant should be credited for, in fact, coming forward, because I, I don't think this is something that anyone could even perceive. So this isn't a change of the change in the footprint on the ground. It's a change eight feet above ground. It's, it's the equivalent of an overhang or changing the eave. Effectively, it's changing the drip line of the building, if you would. Given the extremely unusual, if not unique, situations uh, of this property, certainly in the neighborhood, perhaps in the entire town of East Adam, uh, I think this is certainly an application and a variance and the approval and consideration by the board. If you have any further questions on the particular details of the changes, Mr. Chilton is here, and we'd be happy to I think, answer any questions you have. I have a question. Yes, sir. Is the sluice way still? I used to be a caretaker there in the 50s. Is the <laughs> sluice way still active? It's, it's yes. It's a, it, 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 there's, in effect, a, a gate at one end of the mm -hmm. pond. And, there. And, and, and that... It, it it remains closed as a little bit of water goes through and so mm -hmm. as you know as the, the water level rises and, and, and falls during the year it does so in the sluice way so, so now that used to have a turbine in there are you going to use a install a turbine in there to run the, the water through it we, or we certainly could if we if we chose to do that the okay. way that it's been designed is that mm -hmm. if we wanted to it's basically maintaining the integrity of the original mill building, um, and so so that if we wanted to add a turbine to actually make that, mm -hmm. you know, to generate uh, power uh, Jesus, through that turbine, great. we could still do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this this does not preclude that. Yeah, yeah. I used to work for the original Colonel Larry Wilkerson. Did someone. you? I have. Yeah. Oh Jesus! I started a quarrel. Oh no 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 no! There's a, there's a when, when that might not be a good thing, you know. <laughs> when we bought the property, there's a there's a, a uh, it's Colonel Wilkinson. Colonel Wilkinson, and, Larry Wilkinson, and and his uh, from when he was in the military, his uh, 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 I was say case, but in effect, like his 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 locker, like his foot locker, mm. we still have. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. Very avid sportsman. Yeah. I used to take care of his dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that goes way back to so when Christ was a boy. Yeah. <laughs> one, one other thing, I, I'd ask that you uh, retain the, the color photos that Roger circulated uh, for, the, for the record in the file. Obviously, I can't read my laptop, but those photos are the same to me, so if you just meant to take those Is this going to be a guest house? Yes, sir. And it's going to look like the old mill house. It it will look more like the house okay. itself. Yeah, it's it totally compatible with the architecture. Yeah. Yes. It's going to look like this. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that, that's before we had a collapse on that side. Um, oh, no, that's, yeah. But but in terms of the architecture, I'm talking. You know, yeah, our, our, our house any, is right here. Do you have any pictures of what the, this? Look like? This is a white collaborate house, sort of a classic New England Cape Cod, and this will have the same character. As the house? Yeah. Huh. yeah because it's, it's actually part, it, by making this a guest house, it's part of 
or a family of those that are Um, this has nothing to do with <laughs> changing that, but I just wonder if you know what that mill was used for I do. historically. I do. Uh, one, of, one of the things that really attracted us to, to the property when we bought it um, certainly was its history. And part of the, the purchase, we have ledgers from, from uh, when actually our house was a general store and diaries. Uh -huh. Wow. And um, and so what we know is is that the mill building uh, was used as a grist mill in part, but it was also uh, uh, used to uh, uh, make axe handles. So it had a couple of different uses. Yeah. At one point, uh, and I'm not sure exactly when, but it actually burned, and so it was rebuilt. And what exists today is a bit of a, a combination of some of the, of the original structure when it was rebuilt, and then uh, particularly of the exterior. The exterior itself was probably built in about 1990, something like that. It's always been open air, uh, which has uh, been sort of challenging in terms of right. its being able to maintain a sort of integrity. It's subject to the elements. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hmm. No other questions? I'm good. No questions. No questions. I have no questions. Close the public. Oh, I've got a few questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me let me just also add for the record, the in the wetlands commission looked at this application and approved it as as designed, and the septic system that has been designed is designed to meet the public health code, but you're not a change of use guy today, you're a variance from the water as to whether the you know it's twenty feet versus twenty two feet. So whether it's a building for industrial use and he decided to reopen the mill, or if he decides to use it at a guest house, or if he uses it as storage, it's, it's still two feet. We're just looking at the two feet very right. looking at two exactly. feet. So as where the Wetlands Commission did look at, you know, the potential use and the Chatham Health District looked at, in fact actually altered the septic system so that it would be farther away from the and he originally was proposed to be down below, and now there was discussion to go on top. So those things have all been looked at. I just want to add for the record regarding the septic system has been, septic system for the uh, mill building has been approved locally by the health district. And even though the building itself is close to the water course, uh, the actual leaching system, the parcel field, is being pumped over 100, 125 feet away up the hillside. So that it's not an issue. We've got a building close to the water, and the septic's going to be right there. Uh, that's not the case. The leaching system is going to be back up. It's, up a distance away. it's all been approved anyway. The, the, the site, as far as we can tell, is fully compliant in all respects, except for this issue for the two feet, brought about more by the building fire codes than, than anything else. And Given the fact, I'm just, I don't want to repeat everything, but the fact that the sluiceway is there, this was a viable solution to the whole problems. The preservation to the new construction. Any other questions? Any further questions? No. The building right now is, is essentially out of, that would be out of compliance anyway. Is that correct? Well, it's pre, it's, it's pre-existing. It's, it's pre-existing, yeah. You know, because you have to put the mill next to the river. Yeah. <laughs> and so this <laughs> is a, there, so it's so the only way so you get that. This is considered an adaptive reuse of yeah. the existing yeah, structure. Exactly right. right. I get no questions. No. Have a 
motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No comments from the public on the screen? Okay. Further discussion? Nope. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, recommendation because the <laughs> application. Is, the, the, application. Rec the application. <laughs> the application. <laughs> well, the application recommends them, <laughs> but the application um, to to do make the uh, accept the twenty the twenty feet where fifty feet is required because of the historic. Um, building and and that's where it was built <laughs> you really can't do anything else and he's saving a historic spot okay. he can't change he can't change that and make what he wants to make and still save it because of the um, Requirement. So, so I think with the word you're looking for is the unique feature of the sluice way and its location in relation to the building. Right. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, could I just ask you uh, to save anything that you have that's historic? I'm on the historic. <laughs> The um, historic. Um, yes, absolutely. The East uh, Haddam Historic uh, Building, you know, and society, the East Haddam Historic Society, and we we love that kind of stuff, and the whole idea that it's still there, and as a, you know, it was a mill and a grist mill and everything. So if you uh, have anything, I could not agree more. That the the gentleman did the the. Uh, wonderful restoration in the, the Warren Palmer house. Um, when I went through that, and I, and I learned that the, the reconstruction of that was using timbers from other projects. Well, I was thinking of that when you were talking, yeah. And, so. and what we would like to do is actually work with him and give him his expertise yeah. to be able to have those timbers that can be used to have an extended life. Yeah, it's, it's just an important part of East Haddam's history. And, and it's nice to have that. Thank you. <laughs> what do you figure those piers were built? Well, you know, that is an excellent question because I asked that. Uh, we, we bought the property in 2008, and, um, and the story behind that, I don't, I don't know if any of you knew Walter K. Hasbrook that owned the property for many years. Heart uh, specialist. He, he, right, must. he was a heart specialist. Wasn't That's it? exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Um, <laughs> And uh, I don't want to take your time, but when I met him, he, he had sold it a couple of years ahead, before. And when I met him for the first time, we walked the property. When he bought it, it was in pretty, the whole property is in not great condition. And he, he walked around and he, he would point at certain stones. And he would have, there was a story that he said, do you know where that stone came from? And there was a story behind that stone. <laughs> Uh, it was it was quite amazing. So he told me the story that it was uh, it it was uh, structurally I, it was challenged I think for a very long time. If you go in there now, the wall the, the floor is all different elevations, and I think it's simply because the foundations that were put in. The the piers, I think the piers settled differently. That's exactly. Right. I don't think they're not below the frost line. They were built. Uh, I think rebuilt in probably around the about 1990, something like that. And um, anyway, uh, it, it was, even when we bought it, you you it was not even close to being flat inside. And so what what we want to do is be able to uh, breathe new life into that structure to adapt and reuse as just. Well, I'm just trying to get a date on the bill itself. So. The bill itself dates. Uh, from what I've been able to read, uh, probably around the mid 1800s. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, it was that's when it was particularly active, mid mid to late 1800s. Oh, when the piers were built. I think the piers were rebuilt at some point, and I think some one some some piers were added. I think in probably in the 1990s, my best guess. 
But there's a, our house, as I mentioned earlier, used to be a general store. At one point, it was a general store. So that's where we had the ledgers, the ledgers of, you know, the, yeah. the eggs and the axe handles. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot there for the historical society. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think. Well, in fact, we, we, we those ledgers, et cetera, um, provided uh, a number of years ago to be able to, for the society to be able to, to look to at. To use, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I raised chickens here. I had 500 chickens in the chicken house down there. <laughs> I lived right up on top of Hill, Mill Road. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I, my family still lives there since the 1800s. Really? Yeah. That's just in Hollywood. I was a caretaker down there. <laughs> is the library with the trap door still in the dining room in your house? It, it, that has been, <laughs> we moved that stair. Oh, really? Yeah. So to make the dining room a little more useful. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. That's also, what, also, uh, being somewhat tall, um, getting down that stair was a bit challenging. Because <laughs> the ceiling height and the base was about my height. Yeah. It, it made people shorter back then. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They did. I guess the building isn't, isn't falling down because of the caretaker. Yeah. Care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good night, Scott. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. Yeah. Good night. I'll cheer you on as I go down there to check what's going on. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Please do. Look the whole family's on top of the hill. No room. When do you think the... My, um, my brother, my nephew... The door closed. Fiala's yeah. name? Fiala. Fiala. So when you say top of the hill on... Mill Road. On Mill Road. Wow. Okay. The very top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I used to work there as a caretaker back in 1950, 51, 52. Oh, my God. You should come by. I've, I'd like. I'd, I'd love to. You, oh you, you, have, you, you can tell me more stories. This used to be an old ice house. My, my father used to cut ice on the pond and store it in an he ice knows, house. You know, That's that little building that. that the farmers around here. Sir, I, should you know, know. I know what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, know, I know where the colonel used to leave <laughs> his boots. Oh, we have probably still there. <laughs> no. Oh my no, God. We had to, to, yeah, that was a. Yeah. Oh, we're still yeah. live. We're still live, guys. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, two years in high school. We can be done live real quick. Oh. Has everybody read the minutes? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll stop now. Thank you. Yeah. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, they're done. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any new business? No new. No bills. No new business. Okay. And, uh, to adjourn the so move. Second. Okay. Four. Those in favor? Aye. Not yet. I'll be